You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. You'll never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine away. The other night, dear, as I lay sleeping, I dreamed I held you in my arms. When I awoke, dear, I was mistaken. So I hung my head and cried. You are my sunshine, my. Sunshine, you make me happy when skies are gray. You'll never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine away. We're on the same wavelength because in my blog today, the song I chose. Is also a, a song by Dottie Rambo. And the one she just played was was written by Dottie Rambo. So we're on the same wavelength. Yeah. <laughs> and would you believe it? After an absence of several weeks since the storm, uh, the Bulises are back in church today, and I dreamed last night that I met Sharon in the aisle and said, welcome. Okay. So, uh, you might want to stay on my good side if I'm going <laughs> to start having dreams that come true. <laughs> and I have figured out what uh, Nora is saying. She's saying, oh, no, not this place again. <laughs> uh, I appreciate Dolph making mention of Nora being here. We are so very happy every time there's a baby in our audience. It means that we're not dead yet. <laughs> that, uh, that, uh, we are, there is hope for our future. And we are so thankful for this family and what they mean to us. Uh, today, Mrs. Nell Reed and her sister Sissy are here uh, visiting with us. Nell was secretary of the First Baptist Church for 40 years. And that has to be some kind of a record. And uh, today, they're here visiting with us and it's so wonderful to see them. Nell's house was ruined, was demolished, I guess you'd say, uh, during the storm. And so uh, she's in somewhat the same situation that the Bulises have been in. And she's uh, got so many friends, she doesn't have to worry about a place to stay. Amen. So we're happy that you're here today and we Pray the Lord's blessings on all of us as we worship him together. Our text today is in the Gospel of John, chapter 1. <clears throat> we read uh, last week the first five verses, and uh, the subject was the eternal word of God, which is who is Jesus. And now the subject changes a little bit, although it continues to be the same in verse 6. There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light so that through him all men might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to every man was coming into the world. 
He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who received him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. I want to talk today about the light of the world. In recent weeks, we found ourselves without electrical power, and I'd just like to see the hands of everybody who has flipped a switch more than once, <laughs> expecting the light to come off. <laughs> I certainly did it every time I fussed at myself. It shows what creatures of habit we are. So we had no power for a while. I had no power for a little over two weeks. And there's a reason why we used to call the power company the light company. In fact, that's what everybody called it. Nobody thought of calling it anything else. The main reason was that that's about all the, the power did back in those days. At first, it gave us light, which was no small achievement. I remember in our old rent house, the, wa the wires were on the outside of the wall. And uh, it went across the, up the wall and across the ceiling, and then a, a long, twisted line hung down from the ceiling, and you turned the light off at, at the light. And uh, that was a long time ago, but the lights were important. But we have since learned to expect electrical power to do many, many other, other things. And so when we're without it, we're hard pressed to make it through the day. On Saturday, October 9th, the power came back on in our neighborhood, but we had no power. And we didn't know what was wrong until finally we looked outside and saw that the wires were broken coming from the pole to the house. So when my son saw the AEP truck come by driving slowly, he ran after it and caught the man and said, uh, are you looking for 705 Pine Avenue? <laughs> well, he wasn't, but when Dwight explained to him what was wrong, he came to the house and, and uh, in short order had it all fixed and, and we had power again. And recently, we finally had our air conditioning again. My problem now is that I'm too cold. <laughs> <laughs> but we always find something to fuss about, don't we? What this scripture is telling us is that Jesus is the light of the world. He is the light. The scriptures throughout picture these two entities, darkness and light. Darkness is always thought of as a, in a negative way. It is, uh, it, it is associated uh, with uh, unbelief. It's associated with sin in the scriptures. It's associated with rebellion. It's associated with everything that is negative. So we live in a dark world in many ways. One of the signs of that is the fact that last year, 64,000 people died from overdoses of pain pills. 64,000. That's an enormous number of people. I read on the CNN site that the medical examiner for the state of New Hampshire is retiring early because he just can't take it anymore 
There are too many of those deaths. So the, the world lying in darkness is a reality. Anywhere you go in this world, you'll find good and bad, but generally speaking, we're, we're looking at a world of unbelief and disbelief, a world in which people do not know the one true God in his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus shines as a light in this darkness. I want to tell you an old joke. I know it's old because I've heard myself tell it several times. <laughs> I've told it right here. So I'm not going to go into all the gory details. I'm just going to get to the point. There was this ship sailing through the waters and they saw a light off their bow and it was on a collision course with them. So they got on the radio and said, this is the United States Navy we're in a powerful ship. Uh, you've got to change your course. And so the message came back, you change your course. And so they gave a second message. This is an admiral, and we're on one of the most powerful ships in the world. Change your course. And the voice came back, well, I'm a seaman first class, and I'm in a lighthouse. <laughs> So the analogy I want to draw from this is that Jesus is that lighthouse. Amen. And there are a lot of ships sailing through this world who are offering a free ride, but they don't really have anything to offer. They're not representing light. They're representing darkness. You'd think in our own lifetime that many of these a many of these cults and, and strange beliefs would be fading away, but they're not. They're getting stronger. So today there are many false lights in the world. All you have to do is turn on your television, watch one of the cable channels as they examine Christianity and as they examine the other religions, and they leave you thoroughly and absolutely confused. I'm here to tell you that if you've been coming to the Bethel Baptist Church over the last few years, well, ever since it's been here, whatever you've heard about Jesus and his church and the way to heaven is the truth. But whatever you may hear over the television may bear no resemblance to the kind of truth that will bring you salvation. False lights leads, leads to disaster. False lights out on the ocean lead to shipwrecks. False lights in the world of religion lead to shipwrecks of life. There are many organizations which claim to be semi-Christian and form new groups and appeal uh, to a certain clientele that do not believe what you and I believe. They teach something that is not true. And the end result of that is disaster. I give you the case in point of, of Jim Jones, who convinced people in San Francisco to move with him to South America, and there gave them poison, and they drank it Hundreds of people died that day. That's an outstanding example of the kind of untruth that's being spread among people in many groups today. Christianity has been perverted by them so that we come up with these groups that are huge in nature. I mean, thousands and thousands of adherents. The Moonies is a good example of that. People who are mixing up the truth with make-believe truth and coming out with a new kind of belief that will thoroughly confuse you and set you on the wrong path. There are these occult groups. 
There are some non-religious groups who are major on other themes, but who woo you away from your church and from the Bible. There are ways of thinking that aren't aligned with any particular group, like humanism, secularism, scientism. These are not organized groups as such, but they are beliefs that pervade many such groups throughout the world. If there ever was a time when Christian people needed to know what they believe and why they believe it, it is today. Jesus is the light of the world. Every group and philosophy has something good to offer along with their lies and untruths. But Jesus is the true light. He offers real life. Jesus said, He that hears my word and believes on him that sent me has everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed already out of death into life. Jesus is our Savior. He's the true light. He offers no quick fix for life, but he offers us light so that we may see our way clearly. How do we find this light? Through confession of our sins and the forgiveness that God gives through his son, Jesus Christ. Scripture says, walk in the light as he is in the light. He claims to be the light. He said, I am the light of the world. The one who follows me does not have to dwell in darkness. I read of a couple who celebrated their 41st wedding anniversary by going to Atlanta, Georgia, and just to, doing some things that they like to do. They went to an art gallery. They, they saw a show. They ate at a fine restaurant. They got a room in a wonderful hotel, and that night, as they got, had gotten ready for bed and were lying down and their heads were on the pillow, they turned on the television, and all of a sudden it went blank, and all the lights went out. Totally dark, and they said, we never saw it so dark. It was total darkness in that hotel. And we wondered, when, we're, when are we going to get the light back? And then she thought, my phone, my smartphone. She reached over on the end table and flipped the switch, and sure enough, there was light. And that little light on that little phone lit up the whole room. When Jesus comes, he dispels the darkness. Amen. Don't forget... <laughs> Like this lady forgot that she had light, even though she didn't know she had it. Don't forget that Jesus is your light. You can always depend upon him. You can always call upon him. He will always walk with you and talk with you, just like the song says. Don't neglect the great resource that you have in your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He is your light, the true light. And Jesus sheds light upon every person who believes. I think I've established, and you know for sure in your own heart, that we need light. We need, we need it to come from another source other, other than ourselves. We're not a very good source of light ourselves. But the Lord gives us light so that we can see our way clearly. And... Uh, and rely upon him. Like the lady with the camera, she had a flashlight, but she didn't know it. We have flashlights all around our house. We made good use of them in recent weeks. But they, you shine the flashlight and it shows you what's ahead. It shows you what's behind. It, sh it shows you enough where you can get by. It's sort of like the headlights on a car. You can drive from here to Houston tonight on the light that your headlights give. Now, do they, do they shine 200 miles? 
No. They shine just far enough ahead of you so that you can see where you're going. That's the kind of light that God gives us. Oh, we want to know so much. Lord, what am I going to be doing years from now? What about my children? How are they going to turn out? What about my job? Am I going to be able to keep it? We want to know all of the things that are 200 miles down the road. But if we'll just be thankful for what we have, we'll be able to see our way little by little as God gives us light. And Jesus gives us that light. He lights our way in so many things. We need counsel, spiritual counsel. He gives that. We need moral guidance. He gives us that moral guidance. We need advice concerning our family, he certainly makes all that available through his word. As a citizen of this great country, we need guidance on what to do next and our part in what's going on. The Lord will advise us on all of that. He will give us light in whatever area of our life where we need it. Light is available to every person. The light that is Jesus Christ is the one light that shines in every heart that believes in him. All true light comes from Christ. And there is no mediator between God and man other than that one true light, Jesus Christ. If we're walking in darkness, that means we don't know God. God is light. In him is no darkness at all. Walk in the light as he is in the light. If you hate your brother, the scripture says, you're walking in darkness. We don't want to walk in the darkness. We stumble, we fall in the darkness. Darkness is, is dangerous. And it's walking in spiritual darkness is danger, dangerous to our souls. I tell you, there are a lot of folks in this world who are walking in darkness, and every once in a while, one of them surfaces to do the most awful things. If you never believed in evil, surely you believe in it after last Sunday night. Here was a man who shot over 600 people. Over 600 people. He would have killed more if he just had more time. Why did he do that? Well, no, nobody really knows. What we do know is that he was an intelligent man. He had all sorts of math calculations. He was a sci had a scientific mind. The way he arranged his weapons showed a great deal of experience in doing so. He was Shrewd, he became a millionaire in real estate dealings. Seemingly had anything anybody would ever want. And yet he did what he did. And there's only one word to describe that, and it is evil. I don't know about the folks who don't believe in evil. What do they think happened if it wasn't evil? Darkness prevails in many hearts today, but Jesus is the light, and you and I are his people, and he shares his light with us. Jesus shared himself. He came as the light of the world, and he did not keep it a secret. People who were outcasts of their society made their way to Jesus. They wanted to hear what he had to say because of the way that he said it and because of the person that he was. The Pharisees and the Sadducees, the Sanhedrin, the religious leaders, there were a certain class of people that they had absolutely nothing to do with. And they took pride in having nothing to do with them. Jesus sought those people. It doesn't matter what your past was. It didn't matter what others thought of you. If you could come to Jesus, you would find love and acceptance. That is true light. 
John 5.35 calls Jesus a burning and shining light. And that term was also applied to John the Baptist. John was not the source of his light. He was a reflector of the light of Christ. John the Baptist, as described by Jesus, was a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He was human like us. He came to witness, and his witness is a, was about the light, who is Jesus. No, he said, you don't want to believe in me. You want to believe in the one I represent, the one I've come to tell you about, the one who can save you. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Oh, how the world needs light. Oh, how the world needs Jesus. One day Jesus said to Peter, James, and John, come with me, I want to show you something. And the four of them went up into a mountain. And as they watched Jesus, he began to change. He grew bright. He became a light. And the light got stronger and stronger and stronger and so brilliant that it was like the light of the sun and they couldn't look at him anymore. What did Jesus do up there? What was he doing? What, what was the purpose of all of that? It was to show these trusted disciples that he indeed is the one true light. And the world needs light. Oh, how we need the light of God. The whole world was lost in the darkness of sin. The light of the world is Jesus. Like sunshine at noonday, his glory shone in. The light of the world is Jesus. Come to the light, tis shining for thee. Sweetly the light has dawned upon thee. Once I was blind, but now I can see the light of the world is Jesus. Amen. Let's pray together. We're going to sing a hymn of invitation. If you need to accept Christ as Savior, today would be a wonderful day to do that. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. I pray that if you haven't ever prayed that prayer that you will right now, invite Jesus into your heart as your Savior and Lord. I'll be standing here at the front waiting to talk with and to pray with you about it. Maybe there's another decision that you should make to join the church, to rededicate your life, to answer 